you just riff on that bio, whatever you want to say. I mean, <laughs> I just put something together. Sure. Um, let's see. Okay, we are live. Hey, everybody. I am Rachel Ngom. I equip and empower purpose-driven female entrepreneurs to increase their influence, income, and impact using Pinterest. I share my top strategies that help me grow my blog traffic from 2,000 viewers per month to 36,000 viewers per month for free with Pinterest. And every week I have the opportunity to interview some of the most inspiring and awesome female entrepreneurs. And so you can learn how to build your business. So you can expect to learn, to have fun, and we'll get straight to the point. So today I have the honor of interviewing the gorgeous Kathleen McGee. Kathleen is a former corporate QB turned online entrepreneur. She worked for over 20 years in marketing and advertising, starting at an ad agency for nonprofits, then was the first marketing employee at a tech startup during the wireless telecom heydays of the 90s, and then finished her corporate career as a director of marketing for a division of a Fortune 50 company. Facing an impending milestone birthday, Kathleen realized that she, that Life is too short not to be doing what you love. So she handed in her notice and started her own business. You go, girl. But even <laughs> with a long marketing background, she soon realized you can't hang out your shingle and the customers will come. So Kathleen presently brings the knowledge she's gained from her marketing career and starting her business to help other women who realize that it's time now that who want to build a business to fulfill them. So she helps them get seen, be heard, and become known by their ideal clients. Kathleen is a New Jersey native, married to an Irishman, <laughs> and has two teenage sons. She's also a support addict and yeah. do list fanatic. Yes. And awesome. Okay, so that's a fun intro, but I'm sure <laughs> there are some gaps. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and give us a glimpse into your personal life? Okay, cool. Um, well, as you mentioned, I have a marketing background. Uh, actually, I have a bachelor's degree in biology, which I used during Jeopardy. That's about it. So. <laughs> but uh, that went for an MBA and got into business. But um, yeah, did work in marketing and advertising for a lot of years. Um, as I said, it was an impending 50th birthday of, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. Uh, and it was really because we got bought out by a Fortune 50 company. We were a small company to start my last position. Got out by a Fortune 50 company, got bought out. And it just wasn't fun anymore. It's all the red tape. It's all the politics. And I'm like, I'm not doing marketing anymore. Um, so that really precipitated the, okay, what am I going to do the rest of my life? And at, at my age, it's like you get to the stage of, okay, I don't have a lot of time. It's not like I'm 25 and I can try six different things and then pivot and then pivot. And <laughs> so it's like, okay, you know, what am I going to do? So I left. Um, Soon after that, uh, craziness, my, my oldest son got diagnosed with lymphoma. Thankfully, he's fine. Um, and then my mom passed during that year. So really hit home of life is too short not to do what you love. I mean, that I felt it before, but that really changes your perspective, you know, when you go through stuff like that. So, um, and I really just got inspired at that point because I was feeling it. And I know there were so many women that I were talking to that felt the same way. And you, especially you, you work so long and you do so many things for other people, your partners, your kids, your boss, your company. And it's like, okay, when's my time? You know, I want to be fulfilled and I want something. And I'm just so passionate about helping other women who feel like that have successful businesses and have lives and businesses that really fulfill them. And I had the marketing background and coming out, it was still tough, <laughs> you know, starting your own business. And I'm like, well, at least I can take that for women that don't even have that and help them get visible and help them get seen. So that's kind of where it all started. That is awesome. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about your area of expertise. So branding is your area of expertise right now? So branding, yeah, branding and kind of the visibility. I'm focusing on the visibility because um, I think it's interesting. And like I said, my, my target market is like the 40 plus, you know, kind of ex-corporate um, female. And I think it's different kind of at that age because you didn't grow up with your life on Instagram and Facebook, you know, and a lot of these women came out of corporate and you did, you did online stuff and, and you probably have a personal Facebook page, but it's completely different coming out and having to be the face of your business and doing this online. And it's, it's a completely different world. And so I had experience with that, with my company doing online marketing, doing social media and so there's a lot of women that didn't have that and can't relate that to marketing their business. And so that's where I think I can help 
is bringing all of that marketing expertise. And it doesn't necessarily have to be online. We could do some PR depending on your audience and what your business is and who you're trying to get after and what works for certain people, but taking that marketing background um, and helping them get seen, you know, and, and it's just so hard. I think when you've hidden behind a corporate label for so long too, to put yourself out there, you know, you don't have this, you know, you look behind them for the support and it's like, there's no IT support. There's no marketing support. You know, you're on your own. Um, and so, like I said, help taking that marketing background and really helping them from that perspective is, is just getting more comfortable, knowing what to do, knowing where to go, where to be seen, where to be heard. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. Tell us something that we as entrepreneurs don't know about creating a brand and, you know, the, having that visibility online, but we should totally be aware of. I think um, one thing is, is don't feel like you have to do the latest thing. Um, it's kind of like fashion, you know, <laughs> don't feel like you have to wear the latest fashion if it doesn't suit you like Facebook lives, Facebook lives are the thing and they're great. Um, and Facebook, um, ranks them higher. And, you know, I, I think they're great ways to show your authenticity, which is so important in branding and marketing, but it might not be right for everybody. Um, and if people aren't comfortable with it, I think that will show through. Um, so I've seen a lot of people just do things because they think they have to and, and get on every social platform. And, you know, you have to just pick what's right for you, but you have to pick something. You know, if you're not going to do Facebook lives, okay, you still need to get in front of your customers. You still need to figure out a way to do that. But don't feel like you have to be everywhere and you have to do all the latest and greatest stuff. Find what works for you and be authentic and then really do that though and get out in front of your customers. Heck yeah. I see so many entrepreneurs there on Facebook and Instagram because of, those are like the popular platforms and where mm -hmm. you can be. I'm over here, like I'm on those platforms, but I spend all of my energy on Pinterest because I'm like, right. this is where I'm getting the biggest ROI. This is where not a lot of people are. And this is where I can reach my ideal client for free. So I'm like, it just makes way more sense. But yeah, Excellent. so it's, many people right. like trying to figure out the whole Instagram thing. And I'm like, Instagram is kind of dead right now. <laughs> and you just have to find out where your audience is yeah. and, and where you can get in front of them and what you're comfortable with. And then it'll work, you know? Yeah. It's not going to work if you don't like to do it or because it's all about being consistent, right? It's all about consistency. And if you don't like it and you don't enjoy it, you're not going to keep it up. And then it's pointless. So true. So true. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Let's talk about mindset and challenges. So you've done some awesome things in your career, but as an entrepreneur, what was your biggest struggle when you were just starting out in your business? I think when we talked about kind of the mindset about putting yourself out there, um, I think really what I struggled with was fear of success, which, you know, yeah, there's fear of failure. Yeah. But when I first came out, it was almost like, okay, what if I do get a customer? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, then what am I going to do? You know, what if they're not happy? And um, so I really dealt with that, which was weird. I wasn't really expecting that I was going to feel fear of success. Yeah. Um, but then I just talked about it. I talked to a couple like mindset coaches who were in some groups with me and they're like, you just have to think, okay, what's the worst that can possibly happen? You know? <laughs> and then is it life or death? No. <laughs> is it worse than stuff I've dealt with before? No. It, what, what's the big deal? What's the worst that can happen? And so that, that took me a while of just kind of getting over that and just like, look, what can, what can happen? Cause it's all, it's really, again, I think going back to you being the face and putting yourself out there and it's your reputation, it's your brand. It's not like, it's a company label, you know? And so that was kind of hard at first. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm putting myself out there. You know, what if, ooh, what if I misstep or what if I say something wrong? What if I give advice that doesn't make sense or they don't like, you know? So, so that was, that was a really interesting <laughs> mindset thing I dealt with at the beginning. But, and I think the more you do it, then once you start doing it and you start helping people, even if it's like in groups, I would start making comments and answering things and people are like, oh, that was so helpful. That really builds your confidence. Like, okay. You know, I, I can do this. I know my stuff. It's like, you know your stuff, but you need to build that confidence when you're on your own. I think you build that confidence just through action. So I right. remember when I was a newer entrepreneur. I started my business at 23 and it was scary. Like I remember mm -hmm. the first couple of times posting on social media and like actually sharing my opinions and like yeah. there. the first time I did a video on YouTube, I was just like, it's a little bit scary putting yourself out there, but yeah. you know, you do it and then you do it again and then you do it again and then it gets easier and easier and easier and your confidence builds and then you start to get feedback and people are telling you like you helped me in this way or you changed my life or anything exactly. like that. Exactly. It makes you want to do it more, right? It does. It does. And you're, you're, yeah, you're so right. It's the action really. It, it just, yeah, 
definitely just do it just do it and and that's what it it stops you and that fear too stops you from doing things and stops you from taking action and then yeah i'm a huge right. proponent in that if it scares you it's probably a good idea to do mm-hmm. it so mm-hmm. i mean when i was 20 i moved to kenya by myself which was oh like my God. terrifying absolutely terrifying but um I did it. And that was, you know, one of the scariest, hardest things I've ever done, but it was also one of the most rewarding. It got me so mm. far out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Anything after that, at that point, I was like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing compared to living in like my village in nowhere, Kenya. Oh gosh. You definitely, you definitely have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. You do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not living. <laughs> exactly. What yeah. do you think is your biggest like aha or breakthrough moment you've had as an entrepreneur? Um, I think, um, realizing I didn't have to know it all to start and you kind of just have to know more than who you're trying to help. (laughs) Right. Um, and there's always going to be someone out there that knows more than you do. But again, I think it's that mindset. Uh, I knew my stuff, you know, but then it's that fear of, oh my gosh, what if someone knows more than me? Um, and there are going to be the people that do that, but I think you just have to, you know, again, put yourself out there, start taking action. You start helping people, your confidence grows, and then you kind of get back to, okay, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know my stuff. And then just get comfortable with the fact that, yeah, there are people that know more than me, but I'm not helping them. You know, there's always, I mean, there's how many people in the world for you to help? (laughs) You know, there are people that need your help. And, And I remember hearing something once that was great, was that you're doing a disservice by not putting your services out there and by not helping those people. Yeah. You're not helping them move on. So I totally yeah. agree. I think I didn't realize how much I knew about like Pinterest and social media until I started, like people were asking me for help and I started coaching them. And I was like, wait, everyone doesn't know this. Like <laughs> I thought it was just like common knowledge. And then when people are like, Oh my gosh, Rachel, like, you know, so much about this. You need to actually like start doing this as a business. I was like, Oh, okay. And then it yeah. just went from there. I had no idea. Like my knowledge was so much like further ahead than other entrepreneurs. Obviously there's going to be people that know more than me, but I was, sure. to, you know, to share what I had. Yep. And and I'm sorry. That's so common with people, especially like women coming out of corporate who've worked in corporate for so long you don't realize how much you know, yeah. because it's not like you're, you're, you're shouting it from the rooftops every day. You're just doing your job. Yeah. You know, and you come out and it's like, oh my gosh, you have, they have so much knowledge, uh, but you don't realize it. You really don't realize it. It's, it's so true. I think until you start talking to people and the same thing with marketing, I'm like, well, doesn't everybody know marketing? Cause I worked in an engineering firm where if you weren't an engineer, it's like, yeah, whatever. So, so that's how people felt about marketing. It's like, oh, anybody can do that. You know? So I kind of had that trapped, uh, well, everybody knows what to do and it's not true. You know, and I talked to people and talk to clients and it's like, Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that. It's like, it really, for a while there, it was an aha, another aha. Yeah. You're right. People don't know this stuff. The curse of knowledge. Oh my goodness. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. What is one trait or habit that you think every girl boss should have to be unstoppable? Um, I think limit your work hours because as an entrepreneur, you know, you could just work and work and work and every, you know, endless days, and I find it's kind of like my kids when they didn't have an after school activity. It's like they would just get their homework. They would think, oh, I have all night to do my homework and stuff just wouldn't get done. When they had like an hour to do it, they got it done. Mm-hmm. And so I found I am so much more effective when I actually limit the time I have to work. Because if I have all day to work on something, yeah, I'll kind of maybe I'll throw some laundry in or maybe I'll do this or okay, I'll get to that. And, and you're just not focused. And I just find if you can focus and almost limit your time. It, it, I, you're just going to be so much more productive. I find what helps me if I have like a specific task that I want to do, I'll actually like set a timer and I'll be like, mm-hmm. all right, close out everything. And for this like hour, 90 minutes or whatever, just do this. Yep. That is so helpful. I get so much done. I'm like, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Step away from social media. You know? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> So what is your business model exactly and how are you monetizing your talent and passion? I am doing, my main offering is um, one-to-one coaching. So um, right now I'm doing that. um, It's like a six week program of, I put my eyes on someone's business, see what they're doing, online presence, um, and then kind of customize it as to where are their clients. Um, It's kind of a done with you program where, um, we find out where their clients are, where do they need to be? 
Um, what do they need to be saying to them? What are the pain points and transformation that they need to be talking about? And then developing a program, um, developing a content calendar that they can then execute and um, get in front, become known as the expert. Um, I also have a, a small package of, um, you know, my eyes on your online presence. If someone just needs, just give me some quick feedback, you know, and don't want to do a whole program that um, I do that as well. Okay, so let's say I would, like was starting to work with you. I'm a new entrepreneur and I need to learn branding. What would be like the first couple of things you would do to help me create my brand and stand out? Um, I think the most important thing is getting focus on um, what your brand represents. Um, what do you want it to portray? Uh, and then who are you serving? Um, those are really, I mean, you can't do anything else besides there. I think if you're not clear on who you are and what you're offering and who you're serving, then nothing else makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, when, when you get into the ideal client, like people make fun of those ideal client avatar, you know, persona activities and you don't need to get into, you know, are they married and you know, do they like, you know, flats versus heels? <laughs> I mean, but you need to get into the mind of your customer because in anything you do, any messaging, um, your branding, you know, any social media posts, you want those to relate to your customer. You want them to feel like you know them, you are talking to them. Oh my gosh, she's like in my head. You know, this is exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just a critical step is really knowing who you're serving, what their pain points are, you know, and how you're going to help them. So key. So I hired a copywriter to help me with Facebook ads for a product launch. And it's so funny that I tested the one that I wrote. That was basically like me just like speaking to my ideal client, like from the heart, basically. And then the one that he wrote, mine did so much better yeah. <laughs> because I know my client and I know yep. their struggles and their pain points. And I was able to like speak directly to that. And it was just like, yep. you have to know that. And you want to be authentic too. I mean, you wrote it, like you said, you wrote it in your words oh, yeah. and that's your branding. Your branding represents who you are. Um, if your brand is yourself, you know, but, um, or your company brand, but, uh, you want to be authentic and then people will get to know you, will get to relate to you. And recognize, okay, you know, that is Rachel and I know how she speaks and I know what she represents and how she helps me. Yeah, because authenticity is so is so important too. It's yeah, it was it was an ad. I used like emojis how I normally would. I did like, <laughs> everything. Like it was everything that the copywriters like don't teach you how to do or like you wouldn't <laughs> normally see in a Facebook ad. But yeah. I actually got on the phone with somebody, she purchased something because of that ad and then wants to work with me one-on-one -on -one because of that ad she's like it was like you were talking directly to me and like you did so good with your targeting I was like yes <laughs> yeah. it's really it's about relationships I mean and it's it's sales 101 I mean people buy from people you know I mean there are some things which are low cost and that kind of thing but like in this world and especially for you know online entrepreneurs it's about building relationships and them getting to know like trust you that whole factor so Everything. That is everything. So I built, you know, my business basically around me, my brand. And it's so funny. I've actually like run into people at the store or there was one time we ran into somebody on the crew on a cruise and like she knew me and my son because of social media. Oh, wow. She knew everything about me. And like, <laughs> like, like people know that I love like champagne and I'm a fitness coach who's obsessed with cheese and chocolate. And like, <laughs> <laughs> they relate to me because I share like those weird things about me that mm -hmm. is just like makes me different and unique. And so when they meet me, they're like, I feel like I know you and I feel like yeah. and it's, yeah. it's really cool, really cool to be able to do that. That is so cool. It's so critical. It really is. And it makes you successful. I mean, that's what makes a successful business. So key. So yeah. key. If you yeah. could go back and give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? I would say, um, don't buy like every course and ebook and, <laughs> you know, at the beginning, you're just, you know, people are the same as me is I'm just like an information hound. It's like, just give me all this information. Um, and I've really realized you can get so overwhelmed that way. And so, I mean, courses and ebooks are great, but buy them for what you're working on and what will get you just to the next step. Mm -hmm. You know, I was buying things that might've suited me two years from then or a year later, I wasn't really working on it right now, but I thought it would be helpful. And I just think that God got me so overwhelmed. It's like, oh my God, you know, where do I start with this stuff? And, and it was valuable things and it would, it helped me, did help me later. But at that point, it's like, it's too much, you know, just, I, I think people do need to invest in themselves though. I mean, for sure. I don't think you can do it on your own and you know, not hire help when you need it. 
but do it when it makes sense and do the right thing. Yeah. Totally. There's definitely a lot of information overload. I think one of the best things people can do is get a coach. Yeah. Like that was one of the biggest game changers for me and goodness, I can't, <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's just like buying courses is awesome, but having like someone in their one-on-one -on -one time who's a couple steps ahead of you and having the expertise is yeah. so invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Okay. Sure. Um, so I want to give my audience just an idea of what it takes to run an empire. So what does your team look like? My team is uh, freelancers, basically. From a business perspective, it is me. <laughs> um, but I have freelancers that I rely on. Um, and it's so great to find some vendors and suppliers that, that you can rely on, that you know will do good work, because it's your reputation out there, too, um, that will do things for you, you know, on time, on budget. Um, and so I do have a team of freelancers that I use, which is my empire, I guess. <laughs> um, that is just, it's just handy. I mean, I, I know when I want to work on something specific, you know, um, either pick up the phone or shoot an email and I've got really reliable people that can help me complete the work. So are these people based in the U S are they overseas? They're, uh, they're in the U S they're in the U S. Yeah. I mean, I have friends that, that, uh, do work with people overseas. So then you just got to figure the time zone, but, um, it just happens that these are people I've known through my previous work, through my previous life that I know do, do a good job. So they're all based here in the States. Okay, cool. Yeah. And how are you currently using social media for your business? I am using it. Um, I have a Facebook group, Facebook page. Um, fa I mean, I think Facebook, you should have a presence because there's just so many people on it. It depends on your audience again, but that's kind of a good baseline. Um, I am starting to get on Pinterest, so I might have to take your course <laughs> because again, female audience. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, uh, blog posts, um, email, email list, email list is critical. Um, and then if I have a blog post, do an email about it and then image on Instagram, I want to start going on to social, um, you know, talk about it on Facebook. Facebook groups have been great for getting clients, um, showing up as the expert, offering advice um, in other Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm using it for myself. <laughs> Dude, so you're already blogging, but you're not on Pinterest. So we need- I know, no, I'm no bad. That's bad, I know. <laughs> We're gonna increase your reach like crazy. I know. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's get into rapid fire. So one okay. sentence or less. What do you enjoy most about being an entrepreneur? Probably as a lot of people say is the freedom, you know, not having to wonder if your vacation request is going to get approved. <laughs> it's like you can get up and go if you need to, if you want to, working from anywhere. I mean, not having to have someone bless, you know, what days you can take off. I mean, that just is great. That's the best part for me. Yes. What do you think is the most challenging part? I think the always being on, um, just not you know, you feel it's your business. I have to keep working on this. I have to work on this all the time. Uh, no one else is going to do it if, I, if I'm not doing it. That's, that's hard. That's hard. Yeah. Not turning off and trying to structure your time. That's, that's probably the hardest part for me too. Yeah. Like my business is like one of my babies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We went on a cruise. It was like a three day cruise. And I, that was the first time I was actually unplugged with no internet. I didn't do anything for three days. I think <laughs> the first time I took three days off in six years. Yeah. And, but you need that. You need that because you have to recharge or you're just going to burn out. You just, and you, I think you come back refreshed and with better ideas too. When you give I yourself. Too. I was like, I should probably do this more often. Yeah. 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 Okay. What's one go-to resource or tool that allows you to be a high performer? Um, Evernote. I was, I was not a big Evernote believer at first, but I think I remember reading an article and this is more than one sentence, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I remember reading an article where you have to just, just start using it. Just start using it for everything. And then I did, and it's great. You can just type in things. You can put in links. You can put in photos. And once I figured out all the tagging to keep myself organized, I love it. Yes. Ever know. Awesome. And <laughs> one piece of advice for someone who's looking to up-level their business and have a greater impact. I would say uh, be consistent. Um, whether that's in your branding, so you have the same look and feel and voice and messaging across everything. Uh, as we talked about before, 
consistency and getting in front of people. If you're not doing Facebook lives, then on Pinterest or on, you know, blog posts, but just being consistent because one off stuff, you're not going to get attention. And so I think consistency through branding, consistency through um, outreach is critical. Yes. All right. So to wrap up, why don't you tell everybody what's latest and greatest in your business and where we can connect with you? Um, latest and greatest. I am, um, I'm rebranding slightly to the visibility to help women with visibility as opposed to just pure branding. Um, my URL will be up at Kathleen McGee, M A G E. <laughs> I always get the M C G. Um, Kathleen McGee.com is going to be the new URL and, um, I'm going to be having, you know, launching new programs about visibility and helping people out with content calendars, social media, and that kind of thing. So it's going to be fun. All right. Check her out. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. I appreciate your thank time. Thank you. And I'm excited just to get to know you better. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. Live stream is off. Recording.